hello everyone uh, myself uh, Shudipto I am from the Department of Electronics and uh, Telecommunication Engineering Russian University of Engineering Technology Pruitt. Uh, so today in this video, uh, I will show you uh, one of my project uh, that, that is named as IGBT based pure cyanide inverter. Uh, so this will be a two series uh, video uh, lecture. Uh, in, in my first video, I will go through the demonstration or the basics of uh, cyanide inverter on, and in my design, how I have designed the gate driver and the, how I have selected the IGBTs and uh, so on. So this will be really uh, simple if you uh, go, go through this demonstration or this uh, uh, theoretical uh, background part you will uh, know, know a lot and uh, after that I will uh, show you uh, one of my uh, hardware example of uh, IGBT based pure sino inverter uh, so without wasting time uh, let's uh, dive into the theoretical explanation uh, so hello everyone um, I'm back, back again uh, so this is a, a relatively simple uh, circuit diagram uh, for the IGBT based pure sino inverter and this is the actually circuit diagram and the whole construction uh, of, uh, of, of my proposed uh, designed inverter uh, so basically uh, uh, don't take it seriously this is a simple uh, demonstration and theoretical uh, background of how a uh, sine wave based or, or any types of uh, inverter uh, circuit works single phase obviously uh, so okay uh, so for uh, better understanding i have uh, i have like uh, chopped the whole circuit into several uh, cat cat categories to be very specific i have chopped the circuit into six categories and the derailing voltage supply the gate driver of the igbts the h breeze the transformer and the filter bank and obviously uh, the gate signal generator uh, so okay first up uh, le let me start from the gate signal generator so what is the gate signal generator uh, you know in a uh, pure uh, sino based inverter uh, you need some types of gate signal or, or some types of signal uh, based on that signal uh, the mm, the switch will uh, switch according to the uh, uh, sequence so in, in the, this case i have used uh, uh, 80 mega uh, 80 mega 328p based microcontroller and this microcontroller is responsible for generating gate pulse g1 and uh, g2 so how the gate pulse will look like so here you can see this is a, a simple hand hand uh, uh, written or hand drawn diagram uh, so here you can see this is a, a gate pulse g1 and this is the gate pulse g2 so uh, these will be the switching sequence uh, or uh, the uh, get switching sequence uh, for the individual uh, IGBT. So here in in this case, you you must consider uh, the dead band because the dead band is really essential uh, in an IGBT based inverter or any types of inverter because uh, in a same leg a uh, same leg when uh, uh, we without dead band gate pulse are applied, the uh, sometimes it may get shorted out. Uh, and it may get short the DC bus voltage because uh, um, switch S1 and S2 if the switch S1 and S2 uh, on at the same time the uh, DC bus will get shorted and uh, some types of uh, error occurs and uh, uh, in, in in this manner uh, or for that reason you need uh, the uh, like uh, dead band uh, in hardware uh, EU implementation and, and if you know you want to know more about dead bands and uh, this uh, gate pulse generation or how I have uh, come to know the gate pulse generation um, just uh, feel free to let let me know and uh, let's see i will make some videos okay uh, so uh, back to the uh, demonstration part so here is the main chip and this chip needs uh, plus five board uh, dc logic level voltage as we all know and these will output the g1 and g2 gate pulses and uh, this gate pulse will look like uh, this one and uh, this is actually square web based inverter uh, square web, uh, here i have shown you the square web gate pulses and uh, this is actually the modulation technique uh, in my hardware demonstration or in my circuit i have used spwm or uh, sinusoidal pulse with modulation uh, technique uh, to um, uh, to generate uh, from the 80 mega 328p you can use any types of microcontroller like stm based stm32 based microcontroller or uh, piic based microcontroller or any types of microcontroller so uh, okay so these are uh, main uh, main actually uh, get signal generator and these are generating g1 and g2 get signal g1 into g1 lo looks like this one and g2 looks like this one these are the plus 5 volt uh, logic le level signal so these are plus 5 volt uh, lo lo logic level signal so okay so these gate signals are then directly uh, come to the gate driver section okay here you can see i have used four gate drivers okay four gate drivers for four individual igvds so uh, in this case uh, you, you you would ask why you would need uh, some some types of gate driver like this uh, because uh, here i am using uh, igbt for switching and uh, as you know uh, for most of the igbts it requires 10 to 15 gate voltage uh, based on their corresponding model and uh, other parameters uh, so actually uh, i have used uh, those type of igbts that need actually uh, optimum 12 volt for 
their get voters to be uh, driven so what is 12 volt like uh, here we have generated 5 volt uh, logic level uh, from the uh, 80 mega 328p but we need 12 volt uh, in the gate to drive the IGBTs for that reason we need the gate driver circuit and uh, the necessity of gate driver circuit is many because um, we need to uh, isolate the gate also so that will be for uh, another video so uh, here you can see these are my four um, uh, gate drivers and the gate drivers are uh, getting the g2 here you can see uh, the uh, g2 and g1 signal and they are uh, responsible for generating s s1 s2 s3 and s4 signal these four signals are generated through the igbt gate driver and these signals are directly fed to the igbts and here you can see uh, as as you all know these igbts are connected in uh, a h bridge form and these are forming the h bridge and uh, the um, h bridge gate pulses are s1 s2 s3 and s4 these are the corresponding uh, igbt switches and uh, uh, this pulse will drive the igbts according to the switching sequence okay so uh, actually we, we need basically uh, the supply or the main source so here i have used uh, the dc link bus so this is actually the main dc, DC link bus i have uh, considered 12 to 13 volt uh, dc link bus because uh, the dc link will vary uh, based on the output load uh, so uh, here i have considered 12 to 30 volt actually i have used a 12 volt battery 12 volt battery and i have used a dc to dc variable dc dc boost converter uh, to boost it like 12 uh, among from 12 to 30 volt okay okay uh, so uh, in uh, dc dc boost convert part you can you can see uh, here here is the dc link and uh, these gate drivers actually need uh, some types of voltage or some types of um, uh, some types of like um, uh, their power source so we need actually 12 volt for their power source and that's why i have used another uh, dc dc boost converter from the dc link and this will convert the high voltage uh, dc uh, to low voltage 12 volt dc and fed the um, gate driver okay so these are the main inverter part okay and the output uh, output of the inverter or the output of the ace breeze is directly fed to a step up transformer so this is a very basic thing uh, uh, here uh, here in the, this two two point uh, it, it will generate uh, 12 12 to 12 to 15 volt ac based on the in input voltage and here it will generate 12 to 15 volt ac and the corresponding 12 volt ac will be boosted up to 220 volt ac via this step up transformer here, here i have used step up transformer okay okay and uh, in the output section we have used actually uh, lcl filter uh, to uh, filter out the high high frequency component and uh, outputting the uh, actually uh, pure uh, sine, sine wave uh, from the filter bank you, you, you could use uh, any types of filter and uh, filter calculation or how we, would you calculate uh, the lcl value um, so that will be an another demonstration because this part is uh, like uh, uh, like uh, very tricky to be work on uh, but uh, you could use any types of uh, capacitor like uh, 400 volt uh, 400 volt like uh, non-polar uh, capacitor uh, extra capacitor uh, so that will work um, as a filter and uh, if you want to filter the current and you must use the uh, inductor as well so uh, what whatever the thing is so okay so uh, here I, I have already mentioned uh, this is without loop feedback system okay uh, what that mean what that mean is like uh, in the lower load section we, uh, the in, in inverter uh, won't like uh, what's the main job of the inverter uh, the main job of the inverter is like uh, drive the load uh, so basically uh, in, in in our daily life the load will be defined or the load will be changed after some times or uh, uh, consequently but uh, if the load changes uh, the input uh, dc bus voltage will not change as the dc bus voltage will not change the um, uh, the output ac voltage will not change and uh, it, it, it it will create some types of uh, loading problem so as to mitigate the problem we we, we, we must sense uh, the output voltage and uh, after sensing the output voltage uh, it the voltage should be directly fitted back to the microcontroller and the microcontroller should know what the uh, voltage is and uh, based on the uh, error calculation from the uh, dc link voltage uh, it must uh, generate how the dc link voltage should be and it it, 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 it had to like uh, trust the dc link voltage up to that level so uh, that, that, that will be like another part uh, here for the uh, simplicity of the demonstration i have uh, considered uh, without feedback or um, or open loop system um, so in my hardware demonstration it, it it is also an open loop system and 
uh, I have already implemented the closed loop system and uh, I will make another video for the closed loop system. Uh, so uh, this is the whole total uh, construction and the whole uh, setup uh, for the uh, uh, for uh, my proposed design or proposed inverter. Um, so uh, let me show you some uh, theoretical calculation or theoretical analysis. So here you can see um, uh, I have made uh, several graphs. Um, th these are uh, all uh, practical or uh, experimental graph. So here you can see uh, in, in the left side you can see this is actually the square wave inverter output. So this is the output voltage or this is the output waveform. This is the output waveform of uh, the the in the, this this part so uh, here it, it will output the same voltage uh, as this one if you apply the square wave uh, signal get signal so the, these are two, two square wave get signals here you can see this is the get pulse one and this is the get pulse two and uh, uh, let, let, uh, let me show you another calculation so uh, actually uh, we i have uh, calculated the total harmonic distortion of of this uh, waveforms uh, in uh, MATLAB Simulink and uh, based on the MATLAB Simulink uh, result uh, I have found uh, the total harmonic distortion for uh, uh, the square wave inverter output is 48.97% uh, and it will obviously without filter okay so uh, what do you mean by without filter like uh, this portion without this this filter section the total harmonic distortion um, will be 48.97% for square wave output inverter okay so here you can see uh, I have uh, taken another uh, waveforms and uh, these waveforms is known as SPWM inverter or uh, sinusoidal pulse width uh, more modulation based uh, like get it pulse and um, after uh, after feeding the get pulses the output waveform will look like some types of this uh, without filter and the experimental TSD is 36.225% uh, which is which is quite quite lower uh, than those of uh, like uh, square wave based inverter and uh, in in the recent times uh, uh, all inverters are using spwm techniques or more advanced modulation technique uh, but uh, in uh, and in uh, ancient times or uh, before uh, two or three years uh, most of all the inverters are using the square wave technique um, so this is really uh, harmful for the load uh, so uh, these are the um, output and uh, this is the experimental uh, tsd without filter and this is actually a uh, filtered output waveform look, uh, looks like though my waveform is not pure uh, uh, sinusoidal because uh, uh, I have used uh, different loads and um, I have used a random capacitor uh, for this graph so here you can see but it's look like almost uh, sinusoidal and uh, this waveform uh, will uh, fade it to the inverter uh, like the output waveform will, will be this one okay so here I have uh, used a simple calculation. Here you can see I have uh, break break down the all the total harmonic distortion value. So without filter for square wave inverter, it will uh, 48.97% TSD total harmonic distortion. And uh, um, by applying filter with this um, this inverter, you can get almost I I, I got almost 12.5% uh, total harmonic distortion uh, in output voltage. And uh, uh, in my pure sine wave inverter design, um, I have um, got 36.225% TSD without filter. And after filter version, uh, the total harmonic distortion is 3.89%, uh, which is quite acceptable in terms of IT poly 5519 standard. Because in IT poly 5519 standard, it's um, uh, it, it states that uh, below 5% TSD is acceptable uh, in terms of if you want to push the power to the grid or in, in types of uh, like um, uh, application in your home home appliance so it's quite lower than five percent so it's uh, quite acceptable so that's all uh, for this video in uh, the further video and the next uh, visiting video i will show you uh, how uh, how to like um, how my hardware setup look looks like and how i am getting the output voltages so i'm uh thank you all uh, for um, uh, like uh, be with me in this video thank you